Oh, it's Daddy. Both my daughter and I were stunned. It was my husband. Honey, what's this all about? Seeing my face, Dad had comprehended everything. He was visibly shaken. It's not what you think. This is. There's no escaping from this. I'm Naomi, 34 years old, and I work as an admin assistant. I've been married to my husband Jake for a solid seven years now. We were in the same class at university. We were in the same major and even had some classes together. So naturally, we started chatting a lot. I guess all that time spent together studying did its magic, because we ended up getting quite close. In our senior year, we started dating. We'd been sharing job hunts, dates, and keeping each other's spirits up. Something clicked between us. We were both hectic with job hunting, so there wasn't much romantic time at first. But we still managed to have some fun. Pushing through the job hunt together gave us a buzz of motivation. And we found ways to relax while keeping on top of the games. And with a happy twist, we both landed jobs around the same time. From then on, we let loose and enjoyed some serious quality time as a couple, making up for the time we'd held back. Since both of us were exempted from taking most of the finals, thanks to our good grace, only the thesis was left hanging. So we took short trips, went on drives, and made lots of memories. After graduating, we stepped into the real world. At first, we put getting used to the job as our priority, and didn't foresee each other. That decision worked out well for us. When you meet up without enough mental space, even small things can trigger arguments. We met only when we genuinely felt like it. The time we spent together was a blast and a great breather from work's hustle. Fast forward about three years, we'd settled into our jobs, and that's when we started living together. Around that time, marriage was on our minds, so we wanted to try sharing our lives at first. It went smoothly. And we enjoyed a good share of happy times together. Then, around two years later, he popped the question. It's been five years since we started this journey, but my feelings for you are as strong as ever. So, will you marry me? I felt the same way. I love you so much. I'm looking forward to the journey ahead. And that's how we decided to tie the knot. Even after five years together and two years of living under the same roof, taking that step of marriage was a significant one. So, even after spending all that time together, married life felt refreshingly new. Somehow, I always found myself feeling excited, and there were many moments when I realized we were married. I kept my maiden name at work. But in private life, I took on Jack's last name. When I was addressed by it, my heart skipped a beat. Every time it hit me that I was truly married to him. While cherishing the reality of being a married couple, we carried on with our honeymoon phase. Our lifestyle didn't change dramatically from when we were living together. Yet, just the act of experiencing it as a married couple altered the perception quite a bit. Amidst all that, there was something truly joyous that happened between us. I got pregnant. About two years into our marriage, we found out that we were expecting a child. Hun, I'm pregnant. Really? Yeah, we're going to be parents. Yes, that's amazing, honey. He was overjoyed about my pregnancy, and I was thrilled too. Later on, I gave birth to the baby without a hitch. A lively baby was born. She was incredibly adorable, truly like an angel. 
she's our treasure, an exceptional baby girl. He was mesmerized by her as he held her in his arms. We named her Lisa. She was genuinely adorable, and both of us were in full on doling mode. I made maximum use of maternity leave, plus as much unpaid leave as I could get. So I got to spend all my time with her. Jake had to work, so he rushed back home every night. We spent our time soothing Lisa, and it even made us have dinner later than usual. That was how we passed our blissful days. When Lisa started crawling or took her first steps, we were overjoyed and captured countless videos and photos. She grew fast, and before we knew it, she was able to speak. Mama? Oh, how cute! You can call me now! Every time she achieved something, we cheered. We were totally those overly doling parents, but that feeling of happiness was unmatched. I was happy that Jake was proactive in parenting. I thought once again how fortunate I was to have married him. Then Lisa started going to daycare. As my leave ended and I had to return to work, we had to start relying on it. Jake and I arranged it so that whoever finished work earlier picked her up. When our timing aligned, we went to pick her up together and headed home as a family of three. Something happened at daycare today. Wow, really? Lisa, who was between Jake and me, happily told us about her day as we held hands. Listening to her story while walking home together was just pure bliss for both of us. We were a close-knit family, living our happy life together. I believed we were going to continue living like that for a long time. However, after a little while, Jack's work became busier, and he started having more overtime. So I became the primary person to pick Lisa up, given the circumstances. Daddy can't pick me up anymore? No, he's working very hard lately, so let's support him. Yep, yeah. go daddy. She was such a sweet girl and wrote a letter of encouragement for Jake. I left the paper that said, Love you daddy, you're my superhero, next to the dinner I prepared for him. He had been getting back home when she was already asleep. When he saw it during dinner, he was really touched. No way, she's such a sweet kid. I want to hug her right away. Hey, you shouldn't wake her up when she's sound asleep. Yeah, you're right. Man, she's such a good kid. Can I just sneak in to see her sleeping face? Make sure you don't wake her up with the hallway light. Got it. He happily headed to her room taking care not to disturb her while staring a glance at her face. It made me happy to see how much he cherished her. That was precisely why it was a bit unfortunate that his work kept him really busy and we didn't get much family time together. Saturdays often end up being work days for him, so he couldn't even go out and have fun with us. Sorry Lisa. Dad's got work again today. Okay, will you be back home at night? Yeah, that's the plan. I'll do my best to make it in time for dinner. Then I'll wait for Daddy to come back. Have a good day. Thanks, love you so much. He headed off to work saying that, but sometimes he did, and the other times he didn't. On the later occasions, Lisa looked really disappointed, and it made me sad each time. But it was work, so there was not much to be done about it. I hoped she gradually came to terms with it. As Jake and I climbed the ladder at work and took on more responsibilities, overtime was bound to increase. Even during those times, 
I hoped she'd become a kid who handles things patiently. Of course I wanted to have plenty of family time, but I wanted her to slowly build up tolerance for those situations from early on. Despite that, I wanted to make the most out of the time we had together. I thought Jake shared the same sentiment. Still, I couldn't help but feel he was way too busy on those days. I decided to talk to him about it. Hey, don't you think you've been doing too much overtime lately? Can't you delegate some work to others and come home a bit earlier sometimes? Nah, that's not possible. I'm expected a lot by the company, and both my boss and assistants rely on me, you know. Ah. <sighs> but hey, at least I'm home all day on Sundays. And that's when I can give Lisa my full attention. True, but she misses you quite often. I know it's not ideal. Well, I'll try my best to involve my assistants more with the work. That'd be great. He says so for the time being, but ultimately things didn't change. I gradually stopped expecting much from him. Well, being busy was unavoidable, and it wasn't like he didn't care about Lisa. So, I thought I'd step in and give her plenty of attention in his place. Then she turned five and started learning the piano. She liked the sound of it after watching music shows. When she said she wanted to give it a try, I promptly enrolled her in piano lessons. There were many kids around her age in the class, and incredibly, a girl from the same preschool was there too. Her name was Sadie, and she was in a different class at school. I started chatting with her mom, and we became mommy friends. We talked about the tough parts of parenting, and emphasized with each other while waiting for our daughter's lesson to finish. It was an enjoyable time. Lisa got along really well with Sadie, which made me think that it was a great decision to have her attend the piano lessons. At that time, I never could have imagined what was about to happen. Sadie's mom and I started chatting when picking up our kids from preschool. I heard from the teacher that Lisa even started visiting Sadie from another class. Sadie was also a sweet girl and treated Lisa kindly. It was great that she made such a good friend and enjoyed going to school. One day, I received a message from Sadie's mom. An urgent mother came up and she couldn't make it to pick up time, so she asked if I could pick Sadie up together with Lisa. It was a day when there was a piano lesson after school and we were planning to head straight there. She could come around the middle of the lesson, so she wanted me to bring Sadie there. I didn't see any problem and went to pick the girls up. Sadie's mom had already informed the school, so the teacher was aware of the arrangement. Three of us left school and headed to the lesson. It was an incredibly hot day, and the girls looked really uncomfortable in the heat. Since we had a little time before the lesson, I decided to stop by the ice cream truck. We sat on a bench at the nearby park and enjoyed our ice creams. The kids looked so delighted as they ate. Then we took a slightly different route to the class. While we were walking, Sadie suddenly pointed forward and said, Look! It's Daddy! What? Lisa and I were stunned. It was Jake who was standing there. Daddy! Sadie ran to him shouting. It seemed like he just come out of a nearby building, probably after finishing some work outside. From what Sadie said, I understood everything. Surely he had been visiting her home multiple times, which meant he was having an affair with her mom. I slowly walked toward him. He looked startled when he noticed Lisa and me. 
What on earth is this about? Why is she calling you daddy? Seeing my expression, which showed the realization, he was extremely shaken. No, it's not like that. This is. Um. There's no way to talk your way out of this anymore. Confess everything. Um. Well. Whatever. We have a piano lesson now, so we'll talk when we get home. I glared at him. He turned pale and fell silent. As we continued our way, I asked Sadie about him. Is that man your dad? Yeah, he's with me from the evening until late at night. I see. Do you have dinner together too? Yeah, but daddy doesn't eat much. Then he puts me to bed after that. It sounded like Jake wasn't working overtime at all, but instead he was visiting Sadie's house every day. I, of course, was shocked, and Lisa fell silent by this revelation. My heart ached for her. After dropping Sadie off at the class, I told the teacher that Lisa seemed a bit unwell and needed to go home. Then I decided to go to my parents' place and take care of her with their help. I called them beforehand to explain the situation. Does daddy like Sadie more than me? No, sweetie. As I struggled to come up with an answer, my dad spoke up. Your daddy did something very wrong. It's unforgivable. So there's no need for you to be treated well by such a bad person. Pumpkin, you have mom, and you have Nana and me too. We all love you the most, sweetie. Don't forget that we are here for you. When he gently soothed her, she teared up and nodded in agreement. Then she fell asleep, perhaps exhausted from the shock. I immediately called Jake and conveyed that I wanted to talk. He agreed, so I headed back to the house. I also called my in-laws to join the talk. With my mom taking care of Lisa, my dad and I went to see Jake. He had said his mom with him, but he probably didn't expect my dad and in-laws to show up. He was visibly shaken. Why are you all here? Well, is there something inconvenient? If it wasn't actually adultery, wouldn't you be more open about it? Um, you better come clean. Dad. My father-in-law glared sharply, causing Jack's face to stiffen. Do you realize what will happen if you lie? Then my dad chimed in, and he turned pale, visibly shaken. Oh, well, you see, it's just that. He stammered. At that point, my mother-in-law snapped at him to speak properly. He let out a small gasp and nearly fell off the chair he was sitting on. Seemingly realizing that he couldn't evade the situation, he confessed everything. Just as Sadie had said, he had been visiting her house and having an affair. The initial encounter happened during a parent-teacher meeting that I couldn't attend due to work. They hit it up, exchanged their phone numbers, and through frequent interactions, their relationship developed in that direction. Sadie's mom was a single mother, and due to personal circumstances, she gave birth to Sadie without the involvement of her father. She had been focusing on raising Sadie on her own, but the situation grew increasingly challenging. By meeting Jake, she realized being with a man was enjoyable and ended up becoming involved with him. Despite feeling guilty, Jay couldn't end the affair. He was torn between Sadie and Lisa, who were both adorable. In the end, he protested in tears, not wanting to sever ties with either of them, which made my affection for him vanish in an instant. Do you really think such selfish thinking would work? 
I'm divorcing you, and I'll be taking custody of Lisa. Whether you get to see her in the future is her decision to make. I, I mean, come on, I'm her father, so I have the right to see her. Then you shouldn't have engaged in adultery. My mother-in-law yelled angrily, and he finally toppled from his chair. Seeing him wincing in pain from his fall, I coldly uttered, "You betrayed both me and Lisa. Now face the consequences." Turning pale, he kept his head down. After that, I went through a lawyer to proceed with the divorce, and demanded a hefty alimony from him. Of course, I also sought child support. After paying both alimony and child support, he couldn't sustain a relationship with Sadie's mom. Well, given his salary, it would have been impossible to repay debts and support another child. Sadie's mom initiated the breakup. And she returned to her hometown with Sadie. It was a relief that they left, and we no longer had to encounter each other at school. By the way, Jake was left not only by me and his adulteress, but also by his family. He currently lives alone, struggling to repay debts day by day. On the other hand, Lisa and I moved into a new apartment. And started a new chapter of our lives. She seems to have no attachment to Jake anymore, and doesn't refer to him as daddy at all. She expressed that she didn't need to see him, so Jake ended up losing contact with her completely. She continues to enjoy going to school. I'm relieved to see that, as I was worried about the emotional impact of the divorce. Moving forward. I'll continue to prioritize her, and do my best as a single mother to manage both my career and parenting.